the do's and don'ts of the job interview, next on City Corner. I'm Sarah Thompson and welcome to City Corner. Last year around this time, Frank Alanese joined me to talk about updating your resume for 2017. And now that we're in 2018, we're gonna shift to the next phase, which is once your resume is seen and you get called in for a job interview, what are the do's and the don'ts of the job interview practice and process? I'm joined again by Frank Alanese, a lead regional field trainer with the Missouri Division of Workforce Development. It's great to see you again. Well, thank you so much for having me out. Well, you you know, last year I thought you just gave us such a uh, just wealth of information mm -hmm. about updating your resume, especially the role that technology plays in that. And so I thought this year let's move it on to the next phase, which is once your resume is successfully completed, mm -hmm. seen, and you get called in for the job interview, mm -hmm. what you need to know, what you should not do, what you should not say, and what you should do. So let's kind of dig into things. I thought we could start with the first category of just preparation. Mm -hmm. So let's say your job interview is on a Friday, and here it is wow. beforehand whether that's weeks out or a couple days out, what should we do in preparation of the job interview? Well, in my opinion, what we should do is that the day that you apply for the job is when you should start preparing for the interview because you never know when somebody's gonna pick up the phone and call you. So we t teach people in the career centers um, to start thinking about the interview at the time of application. Mm -hmm. What do I need to be successful if you know mom and pop decide to call me tomorrow? So the first thing that we need to do is make sure that we have our perfect resume, just like we talked about, and it lands on my desk and I'm the recruiter, and I'm gonna look at that and then have a conversation with you. So the first thing is a pre-screening, typically, where a recruiter, a HR, somebody within the organization is gonna pick up the phone and they're gonna call you. Typically, it's more of an assessment, or not an assessment, but a technical interview, can you do the job? Are you the person that we are looking for? So that we can then have a value-added decision to move you forward or not. So first thing you need to do though is prepare for that technical interview. What do you have that I need? And in today's world, that's what it's all about. It's not what you've done for somebody else, it's what can you do for me? Mm. If you remember the old adage back in the old days, you know, the 1990s, <laughs> it was not what or who you knew, it was what you knew. That's how you got the job. You'd walk up to the employer, you'd knock on the door, and you would sell yourself. Somewhere in the early 2000s, it actually switched to not what you knew, but who you knew. And so you were trying to network with the company before you actually applied. Well, today that demographic has shifted. It's not what you know, it's not who you know, it's who are you connected to. And we have to make that assumption at this point in time that the employer is going to vet us. Mm -hmm. They're going to look at us not only strategically through the application, through our resume, but what other avenues are they going to look at us mm -hmm. from. Mm -hmm. And so we need to go ahead and start preparing mm -hmm. at that point in time. I tell people what you need to do is build a portfolio. So the first thing you do you put in that portfolio is the job description. So you printed the job posting and you put it in there. Reason is, how can you talk about the job if you don't have that information mm -hmm. in front of you? Mm -hmm. I also recommend that you complete or print the job application. So whether it's in, in uh, out by paper or if it's virtual, print each page. Because again, you need to be able to talk about how you described yourself to that employer when you filled out that application. Mm -hmm. And are you saying to have these printed for when you go in for the well, interview? You, well, you should well, go in ahead. The, in the pre-screening. In the pre-screening and when you go in face-to-face. Uh, okay. -face. Do you bring in now your resume to an interview? So they already have a copy. Is yes. it still the sort of professional standard to say, to go into the interview and actually bring a copy? Absolutely, but here's the problem. Most people will come in with a version of their resume, but if it's not the version that you use to apply for the job, I'm interviewing this person, you brought me this person, just set up a barrier to employment. So again, in this portfolio, you have your job posting, the application, and what do you have next? Mm -hmm. 
the interview or the resume that you use to apply for the job. So everything is consistent. Wow, and that's a, that's and that's great preparation. I love mm -hmm. your comment too, where it's almost what can you the employers thinking, what can you do for me, and who are you mm -hmm. connected to? Obviously, technology and social media, which kind of segs, gets into that next category, which is the role. And we have that category of social media, mm -hmm. and there's kind of two ways that you could look at this. I wanted to mm -hmm. ask you about which is the employer's social media Correct. and how much you should research that to find out about kind of the culture mm -hmm. and essence and vibe of that company or business as well as the the uh, the applicants mm -hmm. social media and if their HR people might be like hmm, let me check them on Facebook mm -hmm. and Twitter just to see what they're all about mm -hmm. should you not make any sort of controversial post before that so maybe can you elaborate a bit on that that area you know with the instant on instant on off information that we have through social media in today's world so most employers most of the fortune 5000 companies are going to vet you via social media. So yes, you need a public persona and a personal persona. We've just heard all of this wine and dine about Facebook and how they've taken the information and they've used it for whatever world. Not to say that employers are doing that, they're not, but they are going to vet you from social media. So depending upon your world, your industry, they could be looking at Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, Pinterest, LinkedIn, mm -hmm. if you're a professional. Mm -hmm. And so how are you projecting yourself? Mm -hmm. In today's world of, of, um, of problems associated with social media, it's easier for the employer to say no mm -hmm. than to say yes. If I say no, the conversation's over. If I say yes, then there's a lot of work that the employer has to do to bring you on board. Mm -hmm. And so one of the processes is social media. What about the other way around? I mean, should you, in preparation for an interview, just to kind of get a feel of perhaps their language, their tone, how they mm -hmm. project themselves, should you go on to that business's social media page just so you're fresh and up to date about how they, what, not just what they're mm -hmm. saying, the content of what they're saying, but the tone in which they're saying it? Absolutely. One of the things that we try to educate our job seekers on is how to use social media to find a job. Mm -hmm. Part of that is researching the company, using LinkedIn, using Facebook, Twitter, um, and other programs, Google, um, to vet employers. Remember, you're interviewing them just as much as they are interviewing you. That doesn't feel like it because you want the job, mm -hmm. but you know, I've told employers over and over, I am not a mob person. Put <laughs> me in a mob cube and I'm not sure that's gonna work. Uh -huh. So we have to go into that same thought process. Absolutely, you need to vet that employer. First of all, I wanna know, are they truly hiring? Right. Are they laying off? Are they moving out of the area? Okay, are they being sued out of existence? So by vetting that employer, you're gonna learn a lot of great information. Plus, I get this question from employers all the time. So we were recently in the news, can you tell me about that? Oh. And as part of their interviewing strategy, and you're going, uh, uh, um, then you haven't done your homework. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And you bring up a really good point, which are the sort of the wide range of reviews now, because on mm -hmm. Yelp and all these different sites that have populated, mm -hmm. um, you can actually rate a company, and Correct. they can have a one star rating, mm -hmm. two star based on all these horrible reviews. And right. so that I think affects too those questions mm -hmm. from the other side. I want to shift gears to something that seems like almost mundane or silly, but is really quite important, um, is how we present ourselves and what we wear. Correct. And I think you brought an interesting comment. There was a time where it was like, put on your nicest suit, your mm -hmm. nicest shoes, and go in there regardless of the job. Mm -hmm. And that is that really still the case anymore? I hear a lot more about sort of just be who you are. Well, and that's the truth. I mean, you need to be who you are, but you also need to consider the employer. Mm -hmm. So as you're doing your investigation about the employer, you're determining a culture fit. Mm -hmm. um, does the does your job require a suit and tie? You better show up in a suit and tie. <laughs> does your job require that you're in blue jeans and a polo? Then that's what I would do, but I would wear a sports coat okay. over that. Take it up one notch. Um, I came from an era where it was suit and tie all day long, mm -hmm. and it's taken me a long time to lose the tie. But the thought process is I call ahead every time I interview. You don't need to talk to the hiring manager. You don't need to talk to HR. Just ask. So you get the, the greeter at the other end, let them know, hi, this is Frank Alanese, and I'm going to be interviewing with Mrs. Johnson tomorrow for an IT position. Mm -hmm. 
can you tell me what the dress for the day is? Really? That's yes. something you should call in Absolutely. beforehand and if you're if you're questioning what you should correct. Really? Correct. And then just take it up a notch. Okay. That's you good. Know. So always just check in correct. if you don't already know and then just for that interview take it up a notch. Absolutely. I called an employer and they said, oh, you're going to be interviewing with Mrs. Johnson. She's a very, you know, stickler on appropriate dress. Mm. So I know this position is typically business casual. My recommendation is, and they gave me this whole litany mm -hmm. of things that I should and shouldn't wear because I was interviewing with Mrs. Johnson. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So absolutely, if you're not sure, call. Mm -hmm. And it's funny because I've read all these in preparation for this. I read all these little tidbits where people said, uh, don't wear heavy perfume or uh, yes. don't do this and that. Mm -hmm. I mean, even when we get into like tattoos and piercing, mm -hmm. again, it's something that you don't want to have to talk about. But right. I mean, how much of should you sort of hide who you truly are? Um, I mean, can you show sort of t if you've got tattoos? Again, how do you correlate that with the type of job? And again, today's culture, mm -hmm. today's business world, if they're ultra conservative, we have several in the St. Louis area, um, then I would be covering up some things. Mm -hmm. um, uh, but typically, everybody's used to it. So mm -hmm. if you have a lot of ink, then, and you're proud of that ink, then I'm not saying not to show it off, but St. Louis is the largest, cons not conservative as in politics, mm -hmm. but as in culture, we are very conservative being in the Midwest. Mm -hmm. So just keep that in mind. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, I have several companies, they really don't care, large Fortune 5000 companies, and I have several companies that, it's not that they don't care, it's not part of their culture. Mm -hmm. So while you wouldn't be discriminated against right. for having ink, but it may be to your advantage to show your ink after you got the job. I see, so. I see. And you, cause you're hearing too from the employer side Correct. and you're kind of getting, so when it comes to this area of kind of the preparation, you know, we've talked mm -hmm. about preparation, social media, what to wear. I mean, what do you sort of, what's that sort of inside knowledge that the, if, if you had a, before we go to break too, mm -hmm. um, if you had to share that one sort of tip about this, that people, sh that the employers are telling you, what, it, what would that be? Number one concern from the employers that we've talked to a little over a thousand employers is not being prepared for the interview. Okay. So what are you bringing to the table? What, how are you answering questions? More importantly, when you show up, what are you doing when you show up? You know, um, we have a lot of people in today's world that that smartphone is really where they live. The problem yeah. is show up to my area, you pull out that smartphone and you're doing this, mm. it's not going to do you any good. So, so be prepared. prepared. Absolutely. Check in about what to wear, understand mm -hmm. the culture of that company, and yes. even once you get there, just don't pull out your smartphone, right. be present. Be, be ready present. Be yeah, have that portfolio. It, I know it's paper, nobody, everybody hates paper, but we live in the world of today you have to be prepared. Take your notes, be prepared. Number one thing, if your appointment starts, or number two, if your appointment starts at nine mm -hmm. and you show up at nine, you're late. <laughs> Be early. Absolutely. You 15 minutes is a sweet spot. That's good. No, that's mm -hmm. good. Well, we're going to come back. I wanted to get into psychometric assessment mm -hmm. and some other things, but we're going to take a quick break. Before we do, there's the contact information for Missouri D Division of Workforce Development. You can go to www.jobs.mo.gov.org. But don't go anywhere. We're going to have more about the do's and the don'ts of the job interview process. Please stay with us after this break. How can I help my daughter with her reading? Searching for help with docs and reading. Why do you not get me? I do. This is what it feels like for kids with learning and attention issues. Redirecting to understood.org. Join parents and experts at understood.org, a free online resource about learning and attention issues to help your child thrive. Welcome, innovators, dreamers, pioneers of the 21st century. We've been expecting you to come discover your dreams and make your ideas take flight. Just like so many explorers that came before you. Welcome to the hub of opportunity. Welcome to St. Louis. Always exploring. It takes less than one minute to find out if you may have prediabetes, and you can do it here. So what are you waiting for? Just go to the site.
Hi, I'm Sarah Thompson and welcome back to City Corner. Today's show we're focusing on the do's and don'ts of job interviews and when you're going through that process what you should do and what you should not do and we're kind of putting those into categories and walking through each category. I'm joined again by Frank Alanese. He is the lead regional field trainer for the Missouri Division of Workforce Development. And you came last year and talked mm -hmm. about updating your resume. And I love that we're now able to kind of shift gears and go to this next phase. Um, one, I, I do want to mention something that we talked about really quickly over break, uh, which is important. I don't think a lot of people know. Um, we were talking about for the job interview, you were saying that you, you understand that companies will send people out if you're waiting in a lobby just to kind of gauge how present you are before Absolutely. the interview is going to happen. Is that Absolutely. really true? Absolutely. And it's not, you know, it's not anything bad. It's about a culture. You know, are you going to mesh well with my culture? So if you're sitting there in the lobby and you have your smartphone out and you're on Facebook, or even if you're just checking your notes, uh -huh. you know, in today's world, that's kind of a diss, you know. So if you and I are having this great conversation, <laughs> I pull out my, oh, I think I hit my mic, but I pull out my phone and I start talking. Oh, yeah, hold on a second. No. Right. So what they want to know is, are you going to engage everybody in their organization? So people will walk by and they'll not necessarily to check you out, but when they walk by, good morning, how are you this morning? Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. it's just that social engagement. Mm -hmm. um, and so is that a bad thing? Absolutely not, because mm -hmm. if you're gonna work for my organization, I wanna know, do you have fantastic customer mm -hmm. service skills? Mm -hmm. And that means, are you open and are you engaged? Right, right, and how present so, you are absolutely. in that moment. Let's move on to this category of psychometric assessment. Mm -hmm. It sounds like a lot. I think what we're saying here right. is about your personality. Is that right? Yeah, absolutely. So um, a lot of companies have these assessments that they ask you to perform before the interview, typically. Some have a couple that are kind of like after the interview. Um, but what it is, is it's measuring your culture fit versus your skills attributes. Again, I've already vetted your skills process. Um, so now you've come to this psychometric evaluation. Mm -hmm. um, it's nothing horrible. There is no right or wrong answer. What we want you to do by answering these questions is to answer the questions to the best of your ability. Most of them will give you hints not on the answer, but how the answer is. So you have um, four answers per question. Mm -hmm. So it's a, you know, A, B, C, D thing. Um, and then just mouse over each answer and it'll contextualize that answer mm -hmm. for the question. Mm -hmm. Worst thing that you can do in these evaluations is go, I wonder what the employer thinks. Thinks I want to know, right? Yeah, because then you're not going to get it. You're not and so it. when they get the results, I mean, I, you know, this starts gets to, into that gray area of like judging people based on their personality. Because some people are just natural extroverts. Yes. They are people person, they are social, and they can yes. be very articulate. Other people might be brilliant at what they do, but mm -hmm. just more introverted. Correct. So I mean, is this a measure of that? Or when you're doing psychometric assessments, it's looking at your whole personality and how it matches with the company? It's, absolutely, and it's not, uh, it's not there to eliminate. What is there okay. is to enhance my I hire. See. So I'm looking for somebody that has a great sales attribute, the ability to talk with strangers, mm -hmm. so let's say. So uh, I'm looking for a marketing specialist. I'm looking for somebody who has great critical thinking or problem solving skills. Um, I need somebody with analytical skills mm -hmm. for this position. So I'm not eliminating you because you may have uh, a weakness in marketing, but you may have a great sales I see. person's I see. attribute that I can use as well. Okay. So Thanks. typically, though, the job seeker is not going to get the results. I see. I see. Um, and the employer is going to get an evaluation. Do you meet our metrics, whatever that metric says? Um, typically, again, it's not a lose-lose situation. It's a win because the employer is getting a value added. But for us as a job seeker, we may think we're losing in, in actuality. We're not. I see. No, thank you for clarifying. Mm -hmm. That's good to know. I, the next thing is STAR and CAR, which are right. acronyms. And I hear this a lot to say STAR answers, which represent situation, task, action, result. And CAR, which I believe you said uh, when we talked before, is conversation, action, and response. Correct. And so these are how you do in the actual yes. interview. Can you um, help me out here? <laughs> so, um, you know, it really kind of depends on the employer. So if the employer is looking at a behavioral style interview, um, and the interview process can be behavioral, it can be a team-based, it can be an individual like in this interview, just you and I, um, or it can be a group interview mm. where I bring in 20 
applicants all at the same time and we have one interview with 20 people. Hmm. Okay. So really kind of depends. So the star and the car method are basically tell me what you accomplished versus what you did. Okay. It's really simple. Um, and from the behavioral uh, style of interview, the star is going to, you're basically going, give me a situation where you were, how did you handle that, what did you overcome if there was a problem, and then what was the final result. Okay. In the car, what I'm looking for is tell me what you accomplished versus what you did. Okay. When we take a look at the resume and the interview process, as much as you want me to care about what you did for your last company, mm -hmm. I truly want to know what you can do for me. Right. And so most employers are looking at you of what talents do you possess that my company can use. Okay. And then, but if you just say, well, I did this and I did that mm -hmm. and I did this for this company, what makes you think that I need you to do those right. attributes. It's a, it's a lot to remember because you also don't want to come across as if you're bragging, but Correct. at the same time you want to show that you're, mm -hmm. you know, an accomplished applicant. Absolutely. Uh, so it's a lot to, that's kind of that thin line to walk mm -hmm. up. But I think yes. what you're saying, keep in mind what I can do for you Absolutely. is sort of the goal that you should have in mind. This comes up a lot and I'm, it'll be interesting mm -hmm. to hear what you say about this. Salary and holidays. <laughs> so when you get into the interview, it's going perfectly, right? You get right. to that point, it's right. great. And then there's just this in your mind, do I get Christmas off? Do I get this off? How many days? How many weeks? Six days? Do you even bring this up? Do you, should you just... So typically, that's going to be a final conversation when I offer you the position. Okay. So, so not early on. Not early on. Uh, typically, if HR is not in the room during that interview process, nobody may not know. So my recommendation is don't bring it up unless they bring it up first. So we see a lot of times in an interview, the um, interviewer will say, so um, we have a salary range in mind. What are you looking for? Mm -hmm. And so at that time, everything's on the table. Okay. But if it's never brought up, typically I don't bring it up. Okay. First of all, you've just wasted a question. <laughs> okay. Uh -huh. So, and you typically get three, five, six, seven questions most of the time. Here's the problem though. So if I just wasted a question on salary and they go, oh, you have to wait till HR, I just lost a great opportunity I to see. ask a question. I see. But what if it's like, a, it's a make or break for you. I mean, what if you have a certain amount that you just have to make, you should just wait till you get to the offer in the first place you're saying? I regardless. would because by then I've been vetted. Mm -hmm. I am on my way to be successful. So the last hurdle I have is salary. Mm -hmm. So, but keep in mind, it's not how much money you want. It's how valuable your skills are to that employer. Okay. The more valuable your skills are, the higher the salary will be. Mm -hmm. Now keep in mind, we've gone through an, a downturn. So we've had a lot of employers are having to rethink their you know, XYZ salary from 10 years ago to how does that relate in today's economy? Mm -hmm. So it's not to say that you're gonna make less, mm -hmm. but it doesn't mean that you're gonna make more either. Mm -hmm. So know your value, like you said. Yeah. Know your worth. What is the minimum yes. salary? And don't go, bo go yes. below that. And when you say know your value and know your worth, how can you be sure that you are articulating that clearly in that time that you have? Because you've obviously sent in your resume. Correct. And to your point, if they've watched our show from mm -hmm. last year, they've learned how to craft their resume. Um, and you want to get in there and you want to prove your yes. value, but keep all these things in mind about culture and personality. I mean, what's the, the most efficient and professional way to dialogue about that? So I tell people, what are your top five skills that you bring to the okay. table? then focus on those skills. How do those skills apply to the company you're interviewing with? Let's say none of them apply. Um, so you're kind of at a disadvantage. Yes, no, <laughs> not really, because you bring a lot of skills and talents. Mm -hmm. When you apply for that job, you're going to have a great understanding of what that employer is looking for. Yes, culturally. Yes, social. Yes, all of those other things. But you need to know your worth to that company, not how much money you want, but how valuable your skills are. Yeah. Um, the last time I interviewed with a company, literally they talked about my top three skills and said, we need, we're looking for somebody mm -hmm. with this, this, and this. Mm -hmm. You know, talk to me about mm -hmm. those attributes. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And so if you listen carefully and you read the posting from the very first word to the very last word, mm -hmm. 
you will understand what that company is looking for and then build your persona around that. Okay. No, that's okay. really great. Now, our kind of last category yeah. is asking questions, and we've yes. got the graphic for this. So this is pertaining to when you're in a job interview, right. you go through the whole interview, and at the very end, they say, now, do you have any questions for <laughs> us? Um, what do you, what's your response to that? Should you absolutely have a question prepared, or absolutely. should you just go in the moment? What, what's your response to that? So let's talk a little bit about the do's and don'ts. First, never ask a question that you can get the answer from Google. All right. <laughs> Two, salary, vacation, it's off the table until they ask. Okay. Okay. And number three, um, never ask about the company's culture. Now, that's kind of subjective. You should have already done your homework. Okay. So there's other ways to ask that question. Right. My recommendation is I build a question list. And it's 25 questions that I feel the company needs to answer. Now, again, Typically four or five questions, mm -hmm. six, you know, questions you'll ha uh, have to ask or have the ability to ask, depending upon the length of the interview. Mm -hmm. So what I do is I have that list in front of me during the whole interview process. Number one, if they answer one of my questions, I can just reach over and put a little tick mark so I don't re-ask mm -hmm. that question. Number one question I typically ask is, what is the day in the life of? Huh at your organization. Yes. You're gonna hear a lot of great information. Oh, typically we start at eight, so you know what time to get to work. Mm -hmm. um, Monday's reports, Tuesday's analytics, three, so now you have a better idea of what you're gonna be doing. Uh, we wrap up the day around four o'clock, five o'clock, so now you know what time and to go right. home. Yeah. So you're gonna get a lot of great information. Yes, if we go through an hour interview, and I, at the <laughs> end I say, do you have any questions for me? And you go, oh no, not really. You just lost. Oh gosh, no! I, you know, everything that you share, you are just again, like I said, it's such a wealth mm -hmm. of information when it comes to this area, and that's I think exactly what people mm -hmm. need to know. And if you want to learn more about jobs out there and everything, and have questions, go to the website for the Missouri Division of Workforce Development. There's a lot that can be found there. It's a pretty big, comprehensive site. Um, it's www.jobs.mo.gov.org. We're out of time. I could probably sit here, like I said, for an hour and keep picking your brain. We're gonna have to do another segment for the next phase but thank you so much for coming to share this information is really really helpful and very thank insightful you. thank you it's always great to see you and thank you at home for watching STL TV and for watching City Corner and keep it right here on STL TV experience St. Louis